Welcome back to Jersey Matters. I'm Larry Menti. John Bramnick, who is the minority leader in the New Jersey Assembly, has told us several times on this program over the past year that he's seriously considering a run for governor next year. Except he's not anymore. He dropped out of consideration this week and explains why. So the last time I spoke with you was on the radio. And you seemed certain that you were going to run. At least I felt that you seemed certain. You didn't come out and announce, but you you said, I think the quote was, I'm very, 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 very interested because I was yes. pushing you. Right, a lot of very. Well, I traveled around for a year and you know my brand of politics uh, might be a little old fashioned. Uh, and as I traveled, I realized maybe um, you know, I'm not angry enough uh, it's just not my nature. So I didn't think that I'd be all that successful in the primary as I traveled. Uh, my brand of politics is one where it's bipartisan. Uh, you know, I, deep, I deeply believe in the principles of the Republican Party, but I, I didn't feel as if I was actually capturing the base of the Republican Party in New Jersey. I mean, I got some support, but I feel as if... Uh, I'm a candidate, maybe similar to a Jeb Bush uh, in terms of, you know, I like the policy, a happy warrior, but I'm not sure uh, that was going to be enough in a Republican primary this year. Uh, and that's kind of why I made the decision. Well, give me some examples, because it sounds like there were some specific things that happened to you that made you realize uh, the Republican Party has moved away from me a little bit, or it's at least it's changed under me. Well, if you recall, last time I ran, I no, not only ran against the Democrats, but to my right, there were two people who said I wasn't Trump enough. Now, you know, in terms of a Republican primary, uh, that that's a difficult uh, that's a difficult path when people who really supported Trump 100%, and I didn't really care for how he handled people or how he treated people. Uh, that was a problem as I traveled the state. And I also want to continue to serve. So I also had to make a decision. If I was going to run for governor and lose in a primary or possibly in a general election, that I'd have to give up my seat and my Republican leadership. And I think my voice is one of common sense, decency, bipartisanship, with strong moral principles related to Republican policy. And I wanna to continue to be in the game. And I thought there was a reasonably uh, good chance that I wouldn't stay in the game based on my so-called, uh, maybe they're a little old fashioned, but I'm not sure I was angry enough. And I think a lot of the people on the base want me to be angry and, and that's never gonna happen. I'm gonna to continue to treat people with respect and civility, whether I disagree with them or not. Like you, I, I've interviewed uh, Jack Cittarelli and Doug Steinhardt several times, and, and I, they don't, I don't see them as angry. I, oh, I no, don't, I don't think I don't think they're angry at all. I'm not saying I'm not saying. Well, how can they not win? Oh no no no! But they've been a lot more pro-Trump than me. So you remember when I say angry, uh, I don't mean my two other candidates are angry. I mean that what I think many of the base Republicans wanted from me is kind of the anger that uh, Trump showed. And I have a history here of not really being uh, close to the Donald Trump model. I, I guess what I'm trying to do is look at the field as it is. And it, it was you who's no longer in the field and Steinhardt and, and Cittarelli. I don't see them fitting the bill you're talking about. I'm not saying they're not angry enough, but they're certainly not that far to the right. They're certainly not Trumpers. They're certainly, they've both got problems with Donald Trump. They certainly don't fit, I think, what you're getting at as a candidate. Well, no, I, I, I don't understand what you're saying because both of them have been extremely supportive, uh, at least in the last six months, uh, of President Trump. Maybe uh, Steinhardt a little bit more supportive, but Jack as well. I have not been out there. I didn't go to the rally in Cape May. So uh, I'm distinguishing myself as someone who's much, much less of a Trumper than the two other candidates. And so that, that's, and I, I don't think I, I don't think I misrepresented that, but you need a certain number of the base, I think of the Republican party in order to win. That's what I'm saying. I'm not saying they're, 
I'm not saying they're angry. I mean, I mean, it's pretty clear cut as to the fact that they were actually more supportive of Trump than I was. I mean, no, I mean, that's obvious. Yeah, no, I think they were more supportive, but in talking to both of them, they both claim that they have their problems with Donald Trump. Maybe that, maybe that's changed since the last time I talked to them because they're running for governor. Maybe that's changed a little bit, but at least in conversations I've had in the past, they haven't given a full-throated support of- I, I didn't say they did, but they surely gave more support than I did. That's true. I, I mean, will... Trump was running against me. And <laughs> the, the truth of the matter is I want to continue to serve and I thought this was my best opportunity to continue to be a strong voice within the party, a strong voice within Trenton in terms of leadership and doing it in a way that I've always cherished uh, and I believe is the best way to do it. And do you believe of the two of them, given what you've seen, that the one that can be more like Donald Trump or get the support of Donald Trump is going to be the one that wins? No, no, it's not that simple. You know, in the people who are actually running, I kind of explained where I was, but who would win? I mean, there's a lot of other factors other than Donald Trump in a Republican primary in New Jersey. I'm just saying it was one of the factors that I thought made it more difficult for me uh, to win. So no, there's other factors. Uh, who's been in certain counties more, who's traveled more, who's spoken to the chairman most, who's done a lot of work. I, you know, that's, it's, it's not as simple as I assume you're trying to make it like who's more. Well, that's what you made it. I'm just following your lead. But since you're talking about other things, let's check out some of those boxes. Sure. Do you believe that you would have gotten uh, the support of county chairs? Certain county chairs. Enough? Uh, cer certain county chairs I had the support of. Absolutely. I mean, there was no question about that. I didn't think uh, enough. But, you know, I think that, yes, in, in certain counties, I definitely had support. And, and fundraising, do you believe that you would be able to run uh, raise enough money? Uh, I think that that's one of my strong suits actually raising money. but but as I said, you know I had uh, th that that was a factor, but not the most important factor. How about your family? Did you talk to them about this? Where, where, where oh, were they standing? Uh, my, my, <laughs> my wife really wants wanted me to run because she believes that my message, whether I win or lose, is the most important. So he's normally, maybe sometimes it's the opposite in other homes, but she's a true person believing in community service, uh, really pure human being. So she's probably uh, more disappointed than I am. <laughs> I don't know about my kids, but my wife is clearly, she's the real deal. You know, she's the real, uh, in, you know, she's like morally principled, she's integrity, she believes in community service. So I think she's a little disappointed. And uh, as I left uh, home this morning, I said, I'm going to put that out and tweet. So it's not been easy in the Bramnick house. What type of response have you received from the tweet? Uh, most of it is good from people who say, look, I understand your decision. <laughs> but you get things like, I wasn't voting for you anyway, right? <laughs> Don't you love the fact that you're already out, but people can't help but to be full, be full of hate, right? Okay, great. So not only did you not like me, but you're so happy I didn't run, you had to be mean, right? So, but look, most of the people, I'm, I respect the opinion of people who are my friends, who will tell me the truth, and who know me, not from people who sit on the couch and vent their anger on social media. It's never had any effect on me. Is this it then? I mean, uh, do you see another, another chance to run or... I don't know that. I'm surely going to run for the legislature uh, in this in 2021. No question about that. Nancy Munoz, my running uh, running mate, and I have decided that, and we're waiting to hear from Senator Tom Kane on his decision. So it, it's possible I may run for the state senate if Tom Jr. decides not to run. But Nancy and I are both running, and we look forward to continuing being decent, uh, strong. Uh, anti-tax, you know, in my in my judgment, uh, moderate Republicans. Well, I think that there's probably a lot of people that are disappointed that you're not running. And I agree with your wife. Uh, moderate voice would have been welcome in this time of political division. So I'm sorry you're not running. I understand the reason why, but I always appreciate your time. Thanks for talking with us. Well, thanks, Larry, and I appreciate your kindness in terms of uh, how you handle all your interviews.
Oh, well, thank you. John Bramnick, Minority Leader in the New Jersey Assembly. Still to come, Penn Station in Newark is getting a facelift. We'll tell you about it next.